powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. It's election day in Alabama for that hotly contested Senate seat. Last night, Roy Moore and Doug Jones made their final arguments with some high profile help. I'm Brooke Silva Braga in New York with what they said coming up. City commissioners are looking for a salary increase coming up. I tell you why they believe it's time for a pay raise. Tuesday, the eyes of the nation are on Alabama today as voters there go to the polls to elect the state's next senator. An indication of just how hotly, uh, how, how highly contested this seat is. Big names are throwing their support to these candidates. That's right. President Trump, as well as Obama, former Vice President Joe Biden, have all recorded robocalls that went out to voters. CBS's Brooke Silva Braga has the latest on how the candidates spent the final hours of their campaigns. Alabama will finally pick its next senator today, Republican Roy Moore or Democrat Doug Jones. Last night, both candidates held big last-minute rallies headlined by some big names. For Moore, who's been dogged by accusations of sexual misconduct towards teenagers, it was conservative heavyweight Steve Bannon, urging residents not to let outsiders dictate the election. Judge Moore's a righteous man. And Judge Moore, they've tried to destroy Judge Moore like I told you they would. Remember, I told you this. Moore once again denied and questioned the timing of the allegations against him and asked voters to judge this former judge on his record. If you don't believe in my character, don't vote for me. No more, more. Against the backdrop of anti moore protesters, his challenger Jones brought out Alabama native and former basketball star Charles Barkley. If somebody sent you this as a movie script, you would throw it in the trash. You says, there's no way possible this other dude could be leading in any polls. Jones is trying to become the state's first Democratic senator in two decades and insists the race goes beyond traditional red-blue lines. It is time that we put our decency, our state, before political party. Moore has had a slim lead in most polls, but the latest two are split. One poll has Moore in the lead, the other shows Jones winning. The count that matters happens tonight. Brooke Silva Braga, CBS News. Now, as you might expect, the race has divided the Republican Party. The president and the Republican National Committee stand behind more. Other prominent GOP uh, members, including state senior Senator Richard Shelby, have spoken out against more. So more to happen. The polls close uh, local time 7 o'clock tonight. So we should we'll have, have information some information for you at Montana this morning. Yep. See how that all goes. Meantime, Matt has some information for us. Uh, Interesting uh, notes in uh, weather this morning. Depends on where you are, how really ridiculously cold and warm it is. Huh? <laughs> That's a fact. If you're sitting up uh, along the High Line, temperature's right. a little warmer. Um, if you're sitting in a valley, burr. Not yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> Single digits for a good portion of the area. We're close to a 20 degrees in Ennis, six below in West Yellowstone. We're sitting at 43 degrees in Livingston this morning. Looks like our area temperatures will try to warm up as you head into the afternoon back into the 30s. Remember, there's still a lot of snow on the ground in parts of western Montana, so we're going to take some time to melt that off. That'll allow these temperatures to build back into the 30s, but we're not going to see a big rapid change. We do have some changes in the forecast, at least in what you should expect for the weather pattern. Could include a little snow. We're going to talk more in depth about that coming up here in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Matt. Now, the Beaverhead County Sheriff's Office says that it is suspending the search for 56-year-old Glenn Amann. He was first reported missing on December 1st. The Sheriff's Office has suspended its search efforts for Calvin Charles Zimdars. After nine days of extensive searching, turned up no trace of the missing man. Zimdars was last seen on November 30th at his home on Sugarloaf Mountain Road in Glen, about 22 miles north of Dillon. The Sheriff's Department says it will reactivate the search once it receives credible new information. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 406-683-3700. Closer to home, in last night's Bozeman City Commission meeting, commissioners discussed the need for a salary increase. MTN's Morgan Davies takes a look at why this increase is needed. With the growth in Bozeman, Mayor Carson Taylor believes it's time for Bozeman's commissioners and mayors to see a salary increase. I think it's time for us to look at it again. We looked at it four years ago. I think before that it was uh, 12 years. And um, it's just time to reconsider this situation. Currently, the commissioners make $1,200 a month and the mayor makes $1,800 a month. 
I, I just I think it's interesting to watch the city, um, the commission, staff of the city um, adapt to us becoming bigger and um, the needs changing. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges. Mayor Taylor says that commissioners put in about 40 hours a week, what would be considered a full time job. He says now the pay needs to reflect that. And I think I, I ran into a lot of people that basically said, you know, I can't make this work financially for me if uh, I'm going to have to do half time work or less than half time work and then uh, try and supplement it with the, the, what the city pays. Commissioners are asking city manager Andrea Surratt to do some research and see what would be an appropriate raise for these positions, and they'll make a final decision at the December 18th commission meeting. Reporting in Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now, Morgan tells us if pay raises are passed by commissioners, though those raises would not go into effect until two years from the time they're actually passed. And Gallatin County 911 Dispatch will be presenting to county commissioners on Tuesday morning to ask out the county for $260, excuse me, $260,000. The money would be used to upgrade its analog paging system to function in the digital era. Dispatch says that these changes will make it easier for them to connect with rural areas. 911 dispatchers will page uh, those rural fire departments and let them know about the calls and where they're going. Um, that system is pretty old. Um, it was uh, great for its time. Um, it was installed using UHF links and modems. Um, and that's what has caused the unreliability over time of this system. Now, if the county commissioners do approve these funds, the new software will be installed by early spring of 2018. It will help out with the reliability to increase those call times. Well, the state's top campaign law enforcement uh, enforcer said Monday the Montana Democratic Party violated some reporting requirements in last year's election. Commissioner of Political Practices Jeff Mangan said the uh, party did not identify the candidate it supported with some $300,000 of independent expenditures for the 2016 election. He says that's a violation of state law. Megan also said the party failed to properly disclose it would be spending money to support Supreme Court candidate Dirk Sandifer in 2016. The party's independent expenditures supported Governor Steve Bullock's 2016 re-election campaign. Sandifer and some Democratic legislative candidates, the political consultant who filed the complaint that led to the ruling, says it's ironic that a party often touting openness in campaigns didn't follow the rules. The rules are very clear. And they say in black and white, you know, when you're going to make independent expenditures to support or oppose a candidate, these are the reporting requirements that are involved, and these are the things you have to report so that the people of Montana know <clears throat> who you're supporting and where their support's coming from and all those things. And they did not do that. Now, Eaton often consults for Republican candidates. Montana Democratic Party officials said the commissioner's electronic reporting system didn't accept some of their filings on who the party supported and that they've updated the information. Mangan says he'll likely negotiate a fine with the party, which said it will work with the commissioner to resolve this issue. Mangan dismissed the part of the Easton's complaint, or Eaton's complaint, that alleged illegal coordination between the Democratic Party and Supreme Court candidate Sandifer's campaign. And you can look up at the sky for an annual event tomorrow. According to NASA, the Geminid meteor shower occurs in December every year. It's the best night to see the showers, December 13th into the early hours of December 14th. The peak of the meteor showers will be at 9 p.m. tomorrow night. You can see the Geminid meteor shower when the meteoroids are traveling at 78,000 miles per hour, burning up in the Earth's atmosphere, creating those meteors. Yeah, look, look kind of south, look above Orion a little bit, and you'll be able to see these. They last a little longer in the sky than some of the typical meteors. That's because the origin of this is an asteroid, and so it's harder pieces. And the harder pieces, they're coming a little bit slower at Earth, so they don't burn up as fast. And they, since they aren't comet pieces, they also take a little bit longer to separate. So it's really nice meteors to see, and you have the nice dark skies with the small moon. Now to observe the Geminid, if it's not cloudy, get away from those bright city lights if you want further information on where the Geminid gets its name from or to see a preview of past meteor showers, you can visit us online. Always love that stuff. Yeah. Great stuff there. Very cool. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when Montana This Morning returns, we head to Butte for a look inside an iconic piece of Mining City's culinary culture. We visit Joe's Pasty Shop this weekend, Montana-made segment. 
But first, we visit New York for a look at what's ahead on CBS This Morning. Hey, good morning. Ahead here on CBS This Morning, the NYPD's John Miller is here with the latest on the investigation into yesterday's bombing near Times Square. Plus, the lieutenant general in charge of the Air Force Academy responds to our CBS News investigation into sexual assault in the military. And Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks right here in Studio 57. We'll see you right at 7.